Just finished the live stream over there with Nick, and I ain't gonna hold you. Court was over, but it was just getting started when it finished. If you want to be heard on um, your, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Thanks for the reminder to circle back on that. Um, I had said, talk to Mr. Melnick, and you can put a proffer on the record. So if you're ready to do that, we can do that now. I need more time because I did speak with Mr. Melnick. I told him what John Report said. He stated that um, it was very nice. He said that I, I did not get permission for him. I'd like to address it before I do myself. But okay. And that's what he told me. So I can't make a proffer because I don't have the information. I have him under subpoena. Like I told okay. Him. What do you have him under subpoena for? When? Two hour call. Two hour call. Okay. Um, well, can you proffer to me? I know you're, you, you, you can't say, here's what he would say, but how about tell me why it is that you think this is something relevant to this trial at this stage, considering that Judge Glanville has already been recused. And maybe y'all want me to, I mean, I have not finished reading all of the material and all of the case law, so I don't know what my decision is going to be on the re supplemented um, motion for mistrial uh, that Mr. Weinstein filed on behalf of Mr. Kendrick. Do y'all want, I mean, I will rule this weekend. Do you want to wait and see what that is? Or do you want to just tell me why, why is it that anything Mr. Melnick might have to say in defense of himself matters for the trial? It might matter for everybody's, you know, what they feel about their professional reputation. I get that. But for this trial, why does that matter? So, under uh, Carr, C A R R versus State, it's a 19, I think, I don't know, 97 case, 98. It was the case that um, the gentleman owned um, Hikes Nursery, I think, and the house burned down. Yeah. It's great language in there about prosecutorial um, duties. All right. And and it talks about that the prosecutors need to, uh, they, they carry the burden of, uh, they can charge people, they can ruin people's lives just by the charge. And they have a duty to the public to be open and candid. Sure. So, and they're all lawyers, but especially prosecutors. And uh, Mr. Melnick, I know this because he did say this, and that's why he wants to address you, because he's, he's not mad at me. He, he said he, he needs to have it on the record himself, because um, he said that what the state was saying is not accurate. Okay. And I think that that goes into your analysis of why there was a meeting in the first place. I don't think that it was appropriate, like, and I'm not picking on anybody, but like the Honorable Judge Krauss said, if I was going to ask this on report for an ex parte meeting, I believe that the way I always have it is there's a buffer. You, you have somebody say, what is it about? Yeah. I tell you, and I have to be candid. And if I'm not, in hindsight, you would probably, I assume, or any court would tell me, you had no right to do that because you got it with false pretenses. Okay. So now that he's going to say that um, what, what uh, Adrian Love said to the judge is just patently not true. The emails or description of the emails is untrue. And there's no way to say that's inadvertent because she said that on Friday the 7th versus Monday the 10th, she, she kept on that these emails and she changes her statement. So anyway, I believe that it's- All right, well, the best evidence of that would be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, um, but just somebody give me the emails. I did. I put it in my motion um, that I filed when I found out this honorable court, the court, and I forget what I titled, I can find out for you. But okay, I'll go back and look at those. It was a motion, um, I had two parts to it. And, um, and and it said, uh, you know, I really don't want, and I told you, I don't want a mistrial. I just want to make it right, and I want the record to be good. So anyway, Mr. Melnick is going to take to task, and you make a credibility determination. Um, Adrian Love, John Melnick's statements. He also um, adds that he states that um, he and his client, and he did not tell me, I said, I don't want to know because it's attorney fine privilege. He's going to work on it, he said, I assume that's a waiver. I'm assuming that with his client. He's saying that what, what uh, Ms. Hilton said to the court and to by both courts is not accurate also all right then i have information um that that there's an off so it's not in the transcript so mr weaver's even not there or definitely not reporting it that mr copeland did talk about the killing of donna thomas that it's not on the transcript and that would be either brady if it's an inconsistent so wait so that i understand what you mean are you you are saying that you have reason to believe that in the june 10th ex parte meeting once Mr. Copeland was a part of that, that he talked about the killing of Nutt at a time when Judge Glanville was in the room? Because there were definitely two different portions where at one point he and Miss uh, Bumpus talked privately, which obviously nobody recorded because 
the court, at least the record reflects the court reporter and the court and whomever left the chambers so that they could talk privately, privately. So it's entirely possible he talked to her about that. That wouldn't be on the record and it shouldn't be on the record. Nobody else heard it. And then there was another portion where I believe the court left so that Miss, I don't know if it was you, Miss Hilton, or I think Miss Hilton, Miss Bumpus, and Mr. Copeland could talk together. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not privileged. Okay. All right. That there was substantive conversation about the killing of Mr. Copeland. Okay. So Hilton, hang on, hang on. I'm jotting some notes for myself. Give me just a second. All right, and, and you have reason to believe that whatever Mr. Copeland said at that point in time in front of the prosecution is something that is Brady material. Impeachment. Okay, impeachment. So, okay, is, and therefore Brady. So, <laughs> okay. So that's why I wanted to put All right, thank you. And call the prosecutors. Now, they may say that didn't happen, and I assume that's what they're going to say because they would have a Brady obligation to run out and say, do this happen, this man said this. But they didn't say that with any, you know, so I don't trust that the Brady was being complied. That's why I asked you again today, please, can you order put some teeth into Brady? Because Mr. Copeland did say on the record, I'm a liar. That's Brady. Uh -huh. That's like the greatest Brady. Well, you got that. I so got now, but I got that because I know, but you have it now. So it's not Brady, just like point, you just said. My point is, it was, it was hidden on the tent. How about that? By Judge Lanville and the prosecutor. They knew about it because they were in the room when that was discussed. It's, that's objectively true. So anyway, I'm just telling the court, I was not there. I don't want to make um, specious allegations against anyone. That's why I want to get it right. That's why I asked you to have an evidence for hearing. Okay. I believe that there's Brady evidence. I have a good faith belief. I'm telling you everything I know. I'm told that it's not privileged that Miss Bumpus, Miss Hilton, Mr. Copeland spoke, and it's not in the transcript, and Mr. Copeland was talking about um, – his information on the killing of Donovan Thomas. Because you have to remember, in the statements, he has himself not involved. Uh -huh. He has himself learning about from another person. Right. And my understanding is that is not what he said. It's inconsistent on June 10th. And I did not get that from Ms. Hilton. If that's wrong, that's wrong. But I can't ignore what I'm being told. Okay. Well, that's new information for this court. So um. that's what I wanted to call the witnesses because. All right. Well, you, you didn't tell me that before. Okay, well, I didn't I mean not to tell you that. I'm trying to. I'm not trying to be open, but that's that's the reason I want to call it. Okay. I mean that's okay. Additionally, Your Honor. Yes. At, at some point, I believe, you're gonna to have to make a, a finding of fact on the propriety of these ex parte communications. Oh, I know. That's and, a part of Mr. Right. Weinstein's motion for mistrial. And, yeah. And and you know, I could I, I don't want to be a witness. I, I mean I could say that there's there was absolutely no reason for it and there was no cause for the state to even have these concerns, but Mr. Mr. Melnick can explain, you know, if, if, if he was conspiring with me and Mr. Steele um, to obstruct justice, I doubt he'd want to come in here and talk about it, but the state can ask him about it and get to the bottom of it. But I don't think that's what the testimony is going to be. Okay, and, well, and I think that's important for the court to know. Okay. Well, I don't know that whether it's true or not is what matters. It's what it looked like at the time to the state to give them a reason to say to Judge Glanville, we have some concerns. We might like to talk to you about it. Just heads up. We're going to do some research. We'll get back to you. Um, and by the way, y'all, um, I know that everybody, whenever we were here last, was that yesterday or the day before? Wednesday. So Tuesday, I gave y'all the transcript from the 7th. And Wednesday, a couple of people made some statements um, about, oh my gosh, now lo and behold, we find out there's been yet another ex parte we never ever knew about. And actually, when you go back to the transcript of the June 7th, 2024 um, court proceedings, uh, on page 95, on the record before court adjourns for the day is when the prosecution says, hey, by the way, we might need an ex parte or we need an ex parte. And then it is definitely still on the record in court where y'all all heard not the content of the ex parte, but that the state wanted an ex parte because people from the defense say other things on the record after that. So in open court, y'all were notified that they wanted one. So, I mean, it's it's not quite the salacious revelation that y'all made it out to be. Yes. So, so... 
as in the King case that the state is relying on, the, the state has to make a showing of um, necessity for public, uh, the, the necessity for the public interest for the uh, for immunity to be granted by by the court. Okay. Um, and I was under the impression, I think a very reasonable deduction was that they were simply going back there. They And I agree, they did announce an open court and we didn't know the substance, but I think a fair uh reasonable deduction would be that they were going back there to present the basis for granting okay. immunity. Little did we know that they had already done that and they were going back there to have that other I'm conversation. Finished. So okay. that's, that's. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know y'all didn't know the substance of it, but. And wrapping back around to that. Yeah. I, I don't know if there was, but I'm assuming that under the King case, since it wasn't, I guess that afternoon of the 7th, Maybe it was prior to that. Maybe it was in the morning. Maybe it was the afternoon of the 6th. But at some point under King, there would have been some type of an ex parte meeting where the state presented the reason that they needed that immunity. I, haven't, I don't know if that was done on the record, if there was a transcript of that. But if there was, we have not received that either. Well, there, there better not be anything else that well, how did occurred they as a meeting because I told everybody on Tuesday, stand up and tell me anything there is. Um, did y'all do anything beyond the motion? For, to get the immunity order for Mr. Copeland? No. Okay. So to, we, we submitted a motion. Right. That's and they have a copy of that. And that's right. it. All right. Right. Okay. So, okay. And, and Judge, I also state that at the time, I'm not certain why um, it would be believed that he was. we were trying to get the warrant or the immunity agreement because Mr. Copeland was under arrest at the time that we stood up and made that announcement in court on the 7th. I think he had already been arrested. I well, think. You could be arrested and not have immunity for your testimony. The judge had already told him he had immunity on the record. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, they're probably just trying to remember it themselves too, but all right. Well, um, Mr. Shard, I'll take a look at your new motion. And obviously I'll be looking at Mr. Weinstein's motion. And why don't Mr. Steele, you have to have, you plan to have Mr. Melnick here at nine ish. I don't know whether I will hear from him or not, but okay. And your honor, so that we are, um, I'm understanding is the, on Monday we're having the matter that Mr. Steele wants to present Mr. Melnick for. Maybe. Would that be a collateral issue? Of, Maybe. Okay. So which. So was, if I end up hearing from the two of you on that, I'm not going to make you not be um, prosecutors in the case anymore. We can hear that separately if I even hear it. And, okay, and so would Mr. Steele be a, allowed to introduce extrinsic evidence of a collateral issue that he's raising about the emails and things of that nature? I mean, the emails are already in the record. I think he's complaining that at one point, I mean, the emails are what they are, and at one point you said this was an email to me, and at another point you maybe said... I accidentally got copied on this email, but I think it's actually different parts of the email. I think there's actually an explanation for why that might sound inconsistent, but I'll go back and look at all of the transcripts. Um, but beyond that, I mean, no, I don't think so. I don't know what he's got planned. Maybe you want to ask him, but <laughs> I don't know if he's talking to you yet. <laughs> um, so I don't know. We'll take it up Monday. Yeah. All right. We're one last thing, Your Honor. Um, on Tuesday, I believe I brought to the court's attention whether or not the court would allow, if we get to Mr. Copeland next week, I know you said the jurors might not come back until Wednesday, right. substitution of counsel in uh -huh. order to see if the court had made a decision or a ruling. But oh, one so, objection. Yeah, I never got any kind of written anything or further objection from anybody. So I think there's just the one objection that I didn't get a real good reason for. Okay. You Yes, there may be a substitution if we end up examining him while you were gone. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. All right, we're actually in recess now. So let's address a couple of things real quick. If Brian still is wrong, so what? Honestly, so what? It's called being thorough at this point. If Brian still goes 0 for 100 in everything that he's seeking to do, it's being thorough. This is what you want your judge to do. I tell you people this all the time. It does not matter. One iota. If he gets knocked all the way down. Because all you need is one. So with that being said. What is Melnick up to? Melnick is covering his own ass. Let's just be fair. Melnick said essentially to Adrian Love and everybody in that ex parte meeting. Listen. You're going to be doing this. I'm going to get the hell out 
out of here. Don't care. Don't care. It is up to me, my obligation to the bar, to not put a lying ass witness up there knowing what they're going to say. And on top of that, when Love was sitting up there trying to, I don't know, psychologically battle, because I don't want to say bully him. I don't think she was trying to bully him. I think she was trying to trick him. When she was saying what she was saying, like, whose side are you on and stuff like that, at that time, we didn't know what was Brady material or not. Let's just be fair. So if you don't know, Brady material stuff that is, is essentially important to the case that you had to disclose to the other side. Now, with that being said, since Melnick never called on an ex parte meeting and it was not under any type of order by the judge to not disclose the information of the ex parte meeting, he can do whatever the hell he wants. And that's the part where <laughs> Judge Glanville got pissed off, where Love got pissed off. I don't think Hilton is in on it. I don't think she's all the way dirty like that. But I do believe that Love is 100% like that. So with that being said, I think if that judge finds anything wrong, any improprieties, Love is getting kicked off. I don't, I, I'm not seeing a mistrial because... It's just, to me, the, the jury is going to come in on Wednesday and we're going to resume this case. But I think the only remedy, if she does find something wrong with it, she, love got to go. Love has to go. And I believe still going to go all the way in and put her ass on that stand. Still is not letting go of putting Glanville, Hilton, and Love on that stand. Now, when Melnick comes in, y'all know Melnick is a lot of... We'll say fireworks. We'll just, we'll just put it that way. And the way that he talks with a lot of gravitas and a lot of bravo. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say bravo. That's the wrong word to say. Bravado. And we're going to see. We're we just going to see. Because at the end of the day, that right there was what's called a bombshell. That judge basically said, hey, if y'all then did some stuff that y'all know y'all supposed to tell me, I'm dropping this whole case. But this is being thorough once again. So with that being said, we're going to see what happens. I am i don't know, right? Some of y'all, like, it's just words and stuff like that and everything. And I think everybody can address their biases now. If this happens, kiss the case goodbye. She's going to have to dismiss. She dismissed the case. They ain't bringing up nothing. They got to find new evidence and go through all of that stuff because everything else is not good. Now, could she potentially? Yeah. Are there some things that have not been brought to light? Yeah. Could she end up charging some other individuals who have not been charged? Yeah. Mondo, Woody, all of them? Yeah, she could. So we'll see. I <laughs> I don't know, bro. But I was I'm glad that Miss Sylvia stepped up and told Long Crime. That's who that's the reason we got that footage. Was because of Miss Sylvia. So y'all go over there and check it out. Miss Infamous Sylvia. She's the one who literally talked to her. Hey, 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 court ain't done. Put that back up. Put that back up. Put that back up. And they weren't listening to her at first. And then they started to. Because if y'all remember when we were getting off. Well, when the court was ending. The judge was over there trying to. I can't figure out how to work any of this stuff. And then it turns out that's what it was. But we will see, man. Uh, I got a short video dropping tomorrow morning at... Uh, nine o'clock in the morning east coast six o'clock west coast eight o'clock central and seven o'clock uh mountain time so <laughs> watch out for that one because i ain't gonna lie buddy been a punching bag for a minute and i was thinking that the judge was crushing on him a little bit but i think she actually showing a little sympathy but i'll let y'all be the judge i'll catch you on the next one